Welcome back to another episode of the Corporate Cowboys Podcast. I'm your host, Alex. Today's proof of life is December 14. It's a Wednesday, 2022. Now, uh, I think today's question should be a kind of easy one. This goes more, uh, falls along the lines of um, resume presentation, how to, how to professionally present yourself, how to represent yourself professionally, how to present yourself as a professional. <laughs> you see how I said that in so many different ways, and it's the same fucking thing. I'm not, I'm not saying anything that should blow your mind completely, but some of these questions, some of these questions that we come across have simple answers and have answers that one might not have otherwise thought of as having been so simple, right? Now, this one comes from r slash career guidance. And um, it's asking, it's asking, what do I say for reason of looking for a new job after only two months? <clears throat> what? What the fuck? I, wh- why? Okay, why would you tell your employer you're looking for work? Like, why would you tell... Your current employer, you're looking to leave, right? Unless you are that close to one another and you've exhausted every opportunity to develop professionally, to develop your career, that you are necessarily outgrowing the company. And your manager sees this and is actually supportive of you spreading your wings and fucking leaving the nest, quote unquote, right? But in every other regard, I don't see the need for telling your manager your next move. You never let them know your next move, right? You remain a professional. You keep it professional. And if you do it professionally enough, as professional as possible, it's not likely that you'll burn a bridge. If anything, you could get a recommendation letter. It's possible, but it's how you maneuver yourself as a professional that dictates whether or not folks view you in that light. All right. So the body to this one says here, a little backstory. I just started a job two months ago and it is incredibly stressful. I've lost 15 pounds since October 3rd and I'm not someone who needs to lose weight. (laughs) All right. So what is this person taking amphetamines or methamphetamines come on you come on come on come on you're not eating it's causing you that much stress that you're not eating at all the next sentence is literally i don't eat i'm extremely nauseous all of the time due to the stress my boss micromanages every single thing listens and corrects everything but at the same time the business is in complete chaos I am the manager of the business, but the dynamic is off kilter. That means it's just off balance, that there is not a good dynamic. Today, I had a phone interview. Today, they they used today twice there. So today, I had a phone interview today for another job. How do I professionally and respectfully say this job is too much? They go question mark, exclamation point. This job is too much. I was thinking the environment is unprofessional and hostile because it is. Every day is like walking on eggshells. Me personally, I probably wouldn't go that route. Uh, Outing your current place of employment as not being professional to your standards, you've got to recognize the position that you are in. You are still an employee, so you didn't hire yourself. If anything, you applied, you interviewed for the position. So claiming that it's unprofessional and hostile would probably put you in hot water and not in the best graces for your current employer. On top of that, what are you doing even telling your employer the reason you are leaving. Just fucking leave. If you've been there 
after if you've been there to start of the job two months ago if, if you've been there two months they're not gonna fucking remember you next week <laughs> right unless unless you are absolutely phenomenal and memorable worthwhile for them to be creating memories for to have around long term to keep you in memory right no no not at all they probably couldn't care less if that's what the environment is like if that's what your manager is doing micromanaging every little thing that's probably how they like it that or they've they've spread themselves thin trying to manage everything that goes on while the company is in you say complete chaos don't sweat it don't stress it i don't know how old you are you see i would be asking if i had you in a one to one i would be asking these questions how old you are what industry you're working in your experience working in a support role your experience working with managers having report having to report directly to others and that's not to say that I don't believe your manager is micromanaging. Every manager micromanages to an extent. Now, the more that micromanaging begins to encumber productivity, that's when it becomes a burden. That, that's when it becomes burdensome. But every manager micromanages to a degree, and I'm going to say to a small degree, some a very small degree, and some a very large degree, an overbearing degree, right? They're just up your ass, inhaling the same breath of air that you are. <laughs> and sometimes they let you Go about your own business and check in every now and then. Maybe provide a comment. Maybe provide some direction every now and then if they feel that you need it. Sometimes they come in at opportune times. Sometimes not so opportune times. Either way, they're managers. You must learn to work with them because what they're doing is managing the business. It's managing the project. Now, you're supposed to be the manager of the business, it says, but the dynamic is way off, meaning that maybe the business owner is coming in and telling you how to do your job. And that could be your fault for not knowing how to communicate with this boss. Is there nobody that reports to you as the manager who can let you know a little bit about what the history of this company is like and what the boss is like? whether the boss is on everybody's ass, micromanaging all of their work, you may not know how to communicate with the owner as a manager. You might think that your manager flows, that, that your management skill flows only downhill when in fact it doesn't. You have to service both sides. You service down and you service up. As a manager, as a manager, you're no longer like a technical engineer where all you do is plug numbers and run calculation. No, you are a manager. That means you necessarily move from the operation side to the service side. To a degree, to a large degree, actually. You're not, you're not so much straddling operations and service. You are doing a lot more service than you are technical operation in theory you're supposed to so if you can't if you can't communicate this to you the owner who would be your supervisor if you can't communicate this to them to keep them off your back then they must think you're not doing your job correctly you might have to train yourself you might have to go out and seek additional knowledge seek additional training to learn how to speak and communicate, interact with this person who is in a position of power that they believe deserves, that they believe merits 
their unwarranted participation, their involvement. Me personally, I wouldn't, I wouldn't stress so much about getting the job done as much as managing your supervisor. Because if what you want to do is get them off your back, not have them micromanaging your every move, then you ought to learn more about your manager in relation to what they – learn more about your supervisor, more about the owner in relation to what it is they do in the company. But, I mean, if that's all they do, coming back to giving you the benefit of the doubt, if that's all they do is just micromanage, then it could just be that they don't know what the fuck they're doing. And because they are the owner, they believe they're in the right to be up everybody's ass. Playing, what is it, the fiddle while their company burns down in complete chaos like you claim it to be. But you, you're supposed to be the manager, it says. I am, it says here, I'm quoting, I am the manager of the business but the dynamic is off kilter. Okay, well, is it off kilter enough for you to have to do something about it? For you to want to do something about it? Have you done anything about it? Have you addressed it with the owner, with your supervisor? It might might not even be the owner. You might be a, a middle manager or they might be a middle manager. Have you addressed it with this person who's micromanaging you? And if you haven't, you're fucking up. You're off kilter. Your skills are off kilter. So what you're going to do is leave this company two months into it. You necessarily haven't even been trained on anything. Probation likely hasn't ended. Most probation tends to be, what, three months? Three months probation? If you're at a – that depends on the compensation and and on the technical requirements – But it tends to be three months. So you haven't even cleared probation necessarily. And you're just going to jump ship because you don't know how to manage your supervisor. (laughs) I'm I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing at your ineptitude, which can be fixed. It can be remedied. But it needs it needs active measures on your part. It needs you to take the initiative to want to learn how to manage, to learn how to manage and to be able to manage effectively. A manager, a a, a supervisor who's difficult, a supervisor who's micromanaging you when they shouldn't be. I mean, maybe they should be. We don't know. We don't know this context. This This is all the body that we've been given. Just as your everyday is like walking on eggshells. Dog, you are the business manager. How how is it walking on eggshells for you? But I guess you've you've allowed you've you've allowed this situation to exist, to come into existence, to develop in a span of two months. So really from day one, they were just up your ass and you didn't say anything about it? Really? Again, these are questions that I would ask on a one-to-one. If you are interested and something personalized. If you know somebody, you have an associate who's stuck in corporate, who wants to enter corporate, maybe you want to enter corporate, or you want to approach corporate from a different angle, like a corporate cowboy, reach out to us. You can DM us. You can shoot us an email, a direct message even. On Instagram, you can find us. It's at corporate cowboys with a Z. Patreon account, you can subscribe. There's certain tiers that allow you to send messages if you are that interested. It's the Corporate Cowboys podcast. And you can also send us snail mail, something official in writing, with or without a gift, something interesting, something questionable. (laughs) That's P.O. Box 3372, Rancho Cordova, California, Nine five seven four one. You know we enjoy receiving your piecemeal items. But there are multiple approaches to your problem. The first is going to be through yourself. 
find what it is you're fucking up on. You don't mention a whole lot of interaction happening between you and your supervisor other than your supervisor acting as a ventriloquist and puppeting you, puppeteering you. <laughs> it's not funny, but sometimes I have to create these uh, these metaphors in my mind so that I remain engaged and not just a bag on you for not having good social skills to handle your supervisor. Because that's what it requires. Sometimes, the, at times, a supervisor will be walking all over you because they believe you can't do the job, that you're incapable of doing the job. The supervisor probably goes to work every day and, and the supervisor could go to work every day believing the opposite that you do. They don't necessarily have to walk on eggshells, but they have to do your work every day because you can't do it. Asking themselves, why the fuck did I even hire this person? They can't do their job right. I have to do every little thing for them. And there's the micromanagement. But if you're not communicating with your supervisor, letting them know that you can handle business and to stay the fuck off your turf, to handle business from the front door out, right? As the owner, what they're supposed to be doing is driving business to you or networking to grow the business, to expand it, to scale it to something bigger and better. That's that they have you to manage the business inside. If you can't find a way to communicate that professionally, if you need help, if you need assistance, if you would like an opinion, then career consulting is for you. Corporate consulting is for you. And we can do that for you. Let me read a couple of these comments here because I'm, I would venture to guess that's going to be along the lines of um, – I mean, most most of these episodes they tend to be aligned with with uh, what I bring. I know I bring a much more nuanced, a much more differentiated angle in that corporate is the end all be all. It's corporate war, so we have to conduct ourselves as corporate cowboys, consummate professionals. But there's going to be the odd comments every now and then of like, well. You know, think think of your think of the emotional side. Think of I don't know. Think of their family or something. <laughs> Again, I've got nothing against people who make their beds and sleep in them. But if you choose to settle, if you choose to settle in a position for the sake of stability, for the sake of security, the illusion. Don't be alarmed. Don't don't be uh, don't be surprised when you get leapfrogged, when you get walked over, when you get passed up. The first comment here says, "Say it nicely without trash talking. Never trash talk your ex employer in an interview, but you can say in quotes it wasn't working out for me professionally, or in quotes." Once I got in, I saw that it wouldn't afford me the career op- the career development opportunities I was looking for, and then switch it back to the new job you're interviewing for, which is why, in quotes, which is why I think the new company here, the uh, insert new company name, could be a good fit for me. Yeah, um, I mean, you've been there less than two months. I don't know whether you have to include it on your resume or even talk about it in your interview. You've been there for less than two months. It's not even a blip on anybody's radar. I, I, I mean, I suggested because I may have misunderstood the body when it says uh, here, today I have a phone interview. Today, today I have a phone interview today for another job. Yeah, okay, maybe because they miswrote it. But it says here, today I have a phone interview today for another job. How do I professionally and respectfully say this job is too much? I misunderstood, right? 
in that I thought that you were going to tell your supervisor that the job was too much, that the job is unprofessional, and that the job is hostile. <laughs> I thought you were going to tell your immediate supervisor this bullshit. But it's worse. I come to learn that it's worse. You plan on telling them in an interview that your job is bullshit, that you get micromanaged, that you can't manage your own supervisor, that you cannot communicate with them. You plan on telling them this bullshit? No, no, don't. You will be shooting yourself in the foot and then cutting your leg off at the knee. Don't, don't fucking do that. Don't. Don't. I implore you not to. I wouldn't even bring it up in an interview. Just interview for the job like you would normally. Interview for the job like you interviewed for this, for this position that you can't fulfill now. <laughs> What's the worst that could happen? What? Why would you bring up the fact that you're at a company now when we don't know, again, we don't have the context, and these are questions I would ask, we don't have the context, what the company is, what kind of reputation they hold in their industry, uh, how, how high up, like exactly what position in the organizational hierarchy you are even, right? Because you claim to be the business manager, but you got somebody else managing you. Well, I mean, what are they exactly? Are they the owner? Are they are they corporate, right? Are are they somebody of of reputation, of, of of stature, of status? We don't know that. So you trash talking this company in another interview, which could be in the same industry, <laughs> you could be closing some doors before they're even open. Don't do it. Remain professional. What this person says, what this first comment says here is the right move. Is to be professional about it and just tell them it wasn't working out for me professionally. That you were seeking different opportunities to develop professionally, which is why you applied where you're applying now. But that is even if you have to bring up the fact that you are currently employed and that you've only been there for two months. Otherwise, don't. What's the benefit of you disclosing that information? There is none. So don't. A second comment here says something like, or, or they could say something like, in quotes, the role turned out to be different than the interview. For some roles, success is just not possible, they go on to say here. Some roles are badly designed. Most people understand this. Don't fall into the trap of describing actual issues. Just say, one, that you didn't detect any issues in the interview and but two, there were non-starters when you arrived. And that's all. Don't take home someone else's problems. And then, and then they go on to edit, they add an edit to their own comment here. I was in this position last year and I just ended with, if that's okay, I'd just like to leave it there. You need to show massive maturity so the problem is easy for them to understand but doesn't encourage them to dig into possible behavior issues with you. <laughs> Yo, I'm laughing. I'm laughing because digging into behavior issues with them is exactly what I did. Notice, notice how I went back and I, I, I put my finger on the fact that this shit sounds like you're just complaining about a boss being a boss. And if you can't communicate with them, at least you're not giving us any additional context on your situation that you've attempted to communicate this issue and address this issue with your supervisor. It sounds, it sounds, it's beginning to sound like you're a bitch and you might have possible behavior issues that we don't want to bring on board at this new company. If you can't manage your supervisor, how the fuck can we expect you to manage our supervisor? Or your supervisor when you arrive to our company. <laughs> yeah, don't don't talk shit. Don't talk shit at an organization, right? Unless you have unless you have proof. Unless you have proof. Right? But even then, a lot of the times you find yourself in a position where you need proof and all you have is is, is witnesses, right? 
maybe witnesses, but nothing in, in really hard copy. And that becomes more a show of um, a show of power than a show of authority. <clears throat> but that's but that's another episode. That is a that is another episode entirely. Uh, this this yeah. So so this comment is right in that sense where it says yeah, just that's all. Just keep it professional. Keep it professional. Um, you can you can say again if you have to disclose the fact that you've been at this company for less than two months, you can you can state that it's not what you expected. That it was it was a different company that you were working for than the one you interviewed for, and so those opportunities for professional development are different from your expectations going into it. Otherwise, say nothing at all. If you don't have anything nice to say, and if you can't burn them while you're there, right? If, you're not, if you don't have concrete proof, the evidence required to do that kind of work, fucking don't. Don't risk it. Don't risk it. It's not worth it. One last comment. It says here, it's it's your once in a career, quote unquote, this isn't what I thought it was going to be. And I immediately recognized it and I'm taking action to make a change. It's honest. It says here, it's honest and shows you are someone who can quickly remedy a bad situation, even if it means removing yourself from it. I tend to agree with that. That is a commendable trait, a commendable quality in a professional, a professional who recognizes that a situation is unfixable, a situation can't be remedied. So you don't want to be there for the blowback. You don't want to be there when the ship burns down and you want to exit. You want to exfil immediately, which is what you, which is what you should be doing, but bad mouthing them, bad, uh, talking shit about them on your way out or in an interview to your supervisor or to your interviewer, not, not the move. That is not the move. Don't do it. It could be that you came in at the wrong time. You've been there for two months. I got dirt. I got dirt, but that's because I've been at a spot for what? Three years. (laughs) That comes with time. Two months is two months is likely not enough. If all you got is micromanaging, I've seen dirt. I've done dirt. (laughs) So I got dirt. (laughs) Um, Yeah, but this could be your, your once in a career, your once in a career that this was not what I, this is not what I thought it was going to be. And I recognized it. And so I'm, I'm making those changes to have, you know, my work align with my values or my work align with my professional objectives. But keep it professional. Again, that's even if you have to disclose it, which I don't see why you would have to. But you're over here. It it could be the fact that you're 15 pounds lighter and you're not eating. You're not well nourished. So you're not getting that nutrition to your fucking brain to think straight. But (laughs) I don't think you have to disclose this. This could be one of those things that you could necessarily sweep under the rug and walk away from. Just dust your hands off and you're done. And you're fucking done. But... Otherwise, talking shit about a previous supervisor, especially in an interview, is not the move. It's not a business move. It's it's not a professional move either. It does not behoove you. It's not smart. But then I'm going to cut it right here, folks. I want to uh, thank you for for tagging along on this episode. Again. You can find us anywhere podcasts are distributed, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all that good jazz. Want to shoot us something, a couple dollars, you're essentially donating to the corporate war. You're betting on which side is going to win, and you know which side is going to win. Corporate doesn't move without people, and corporate doesn't move without corporate cowboys. But... Corporate is a self-regulating system. It's a self-regulating machine. And I'm just another regulator. (laughs) Corporate cowboys are just regulators at the end of the day. 
So you can find those links as a PayPal, Venmo, whatnot. It'll all go to business expenses, legal fees. But this podcast comes from us. Nonprofit. Have yourselves a great one. We'll catch you on the flip side.